Hello everyone, Monday is the day when we try to analyze the progress of the coronavirus epidemic. We try and look at some of the data, some of the statistics and try and figure out exactly what is happening. So, so here goes, let's just try and look at some of the data to map how the epidemic is actually spreading in India. Now, first of all, the total number of coronavirus cases. Now, these are continuing to rise and to rise uncomfortably fast. More than 3% per day is still the rate at which the total number of cases are rising, which means there's something like 15,000 fresh cases a day. And that's among the highest number of new cases uh, a day anywhere in the world. I think it's only America and Brazil, perhaps, which has a higher number coming in than that. So that's the one area of concern. And specifically, if you want to look at it state by state, then these numbers are really coming from a handful of states. The big numbers continuing to come from Maharashtra, from Tamil Nadu and from Delhi. With Delhi in particular becoming the biggest area of concern because the growth rates in Delhi are much higher than in both Maharashtra and in Tamil Nadu. We are starting to see growth also coming in uh, in other states, including some states which have had low numbers till now, but now their growth rates are rather high. Andhra Pradesh, I'm looking at you, Telangana perhaps, um, UP. These are some states where the, the growth rate is a little higher than it should be. And so you should continue to monitor this to see what happens. Now, for everything I've just said about the absolute number of cases, please remember this is not necessarily the data that you should be tracking. What is actually important is not the total number of cases, but the total number of active cases. What's the difference? Active cases, you take the total cases you had, subtract the number of people who've recovered, or for that matter, who unfortunately passed away, and that leaves the active number of cases. It's the active cases which really are showing the load that is there at a present point of time on the health infrastructure. Now, in India, recoveries have been very high and that the track of the of the recoveries the trajectory of the recoveries is really good and so that means that the growth rate of active cases has actually been slowing down for several days several weeks now yeah there are wobbles up and down we had a bit of a wobble the last three or four days now that's going back down but by and large the secular trend here has been that the number of the growth rate of active cases has been going down that also means that while overall cases are doubling, let's say, every 18 to 19 days, active cases are actually doubling in approximately a month. And that has, that has actually important uh, implications because if active cases are going to double in a month, then that really means that India as a whole is going to reach something like 300,000 active cases 30 days from now, which is which is not good, but it, it's not as, as bad as some perhaps are fearing. So important to keep those recoveries going and important to make sure that, that the total number of cases don't accelerate. Individually, what does that mean for states? It means that a month from now, 30 days from now, Maharashtra could have something like 100,000 active cases, Tamil Nadu something like 80,000 active cases, Delhi 36,000, and some of the states I was just talking about, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, UP could perhaps emerge as active hotspots uh, 30 days from now. Now, very important to remember the health warning and all of this. This is nothing but Parag's uh, extrapolation based on the last, in our case, we've, looked, we've done the settings at seven days growth rate and no correction. That's how you're getting these numbers. So because recoveries have been very high in Delhi in the last two or three days, that's why Delhi is only projected at hitting 36,000 active cases 30 days from now. If you change those assumptions, if the growth rate of cases goes up or the growth rate of recoveries goes down, then the actual burden on the healthcare system could be much more than that. But these are important data points to continue to track and to continue to track really closely. And of course, I'm certain that the governments are also looking at epidemiological studies to back up this purely mathematical uh, analysis. So with all of that data behind you this Monday evening, let's quickly show you all the major stories at this hour. India on Monday reported the highest single-day jump in coronavirus deaths with 445 fatalities in the past 24 hours, according to the data released by the Health Ministry on Monday morning. The total number of fatalities due to the virus has now gone up to 13,699. There was an increase of 14,821 new positive cases. The spike took the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country past 4.25 lakh. Over 2.37 lakh people have recovered so far from the infection. 
The Union Health Ministry said on Monday that India's COVID-19 cases per lakh people is one of the lowest in the world despite its high population density. And the recovery rate has now reached almost 56%. For every 1 lakh population, there are 30.04 coronavirus cases in India, while the global average is over three times at 114.67, the ministry said. The ministry said in a statement that this low figure is thus a testimony to the graded, preemptive and proactive approach the government along with the states and union territories took for prevention, containment and management of COVID-19. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Monday said the government will help patients get oxygen easily through a phone call. Breathing difficulty and low oxygen levels in blood are the most common complications in the COVID infection, the Chief Minister said. To counter this, the government, he said, will be providing pulse oximeter to measure oxygen levels in blood at home so patients can request for oxygen even before they have breathing difficulties. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Monday said that India is fighting two wars against China. One is at the border and the other against the virus that has come from China. Just like our soldiers who fought bravely on our border with China, we will fight against the virus that has come from China, said Delhi Chief Minister Kejriwal. Today, एक चाइना के द्वारा भेजे गए वायरस के खिलाफ और दूसरा चाइना के खिलाफ बॉर्डर के ऊपर युद्ध लड़ रहा है वायरस के खिलाफ हमारे डॉक्टर हमारे नर्स ये सब युद्ध लड़ रहे हैं और बॉर्डर के ऊपर हमारे सैनिक युद्ध लड़ रहे हैं the center has asked the Delhi government to demarcate COVID containment zones afresh and report each coronavirus death to the center. Home Minister Amit Shah on Sunday held his third meeting in a week with Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Lieutenant Governor Anil Bejal to discuss the coronavirus situation in the capital. The Home Minister directed the Delhi government to submit a detailed report of every coronavirus death with the special focus on whether the person was in home isolation and whether the person was brought to the hospital at the right time or not. 57 minor girls have tested positive for the novel coronavirus at a government-run children's shelter home in Kanpur district of Uttar Pradesh, with five of them found to be pregnant. Two more girls who did not have the virus were also found to be pregnant, while another has been found HIV positive. The Kanpur district administration on Sunday, however, claimed that the girls were pregnant at the time they came to the shelter home. A total of 58 people from the state-run home are admitted to a hospital, including 57 girl in inmates and one employee. The state's opposition leaders, including former Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav, have demanded a probe into the alleged physical exploitation of girls at the shelter home. Modifying its earlier order, the Supreme Court on Monday said it is up to the temple authorities and Odisha government to decide on the annual Rath Yatra in the state. The centre and the Odisha government had petitioned the top court against stopping the Yatra. Citing faith and tradition, the petitioners told the court that the famous Yatra has been running uninterrupted for 285 years. The apex court had earlier cancelled the Yatra, underscoring public health and safety of citizens amid a raging coronavirus pandemic. The Yatra is scheduled to begin on June 23rd. This leaves the state government with half a day to come up with a plan. South Korean authorities on Monday said that the nation is battling a second wave of the novel coronavirus infection. South Korea has reported 12,434 cases so far, including 280 deaths and 10,881 recoveries after successfully suppressing the first wave, which began this February. A top official said the second round of virus outbreak is in progress in the capital Seoul and its vicinity. The country lifted virus restrictions in early May and new cases surfaced among youngsters who visited nightclubs in Seoul. The East Asian nation is considering to reinstate strict social distancing norms if the number of new cases does not return to single digits. Brazil, the world's number two coronavirus hotspot after the United States, officially passed the 50,000 coronavirus deaths on Sunday. The Latin American country is grappling with more than a million positive cases. Brazil has typically recorded more than a thousand deaths a day for many weeks now. President Jair Bolsonaro has been quietly criticized for his handling of the crisis. Bolsonaro has shunned social distancing and lockdown measures, calling them job-killing measures more dangerous than the virus itself. 